This is the Shackmat Modular Knight's Gallop Algorithmic Pattern Generator. It can create patterns up to 16 beats long and send out two different variations and pulses on outputs one and two. It's one of those modules that's not immediately obvious to use just by looking at the front panel, so I want to spend some time going through its different parameters, showing you how they work and how they interact with each other. So you can hear what's going on. I'm gonna set below arpeggio again here. Just to make it less annoying to listen to, I'm gonna remove the automatic panning and a bit of the filter sweep. The two main knobs are to set the length of your pattern and how many pulses are spread out during that pattern. These also have control voltage inputs. The length can be from one to eight. You can also double that by pressing mode and then table, lighting up the yellow LED next to length, saying you can now go from nine to 16 beats long. Let's start at eight, and then I'll show you the value of longer patterns. Pulses can go anywhere from no pulses for the entire pattern to just one. There you can count one kick drum for every eight notes of the arpeggio. And you can keep increasing it. Until you have a pulse for every single clock input, which is right now tied to the notes being played by my arpeggio. Let's simplify things and go through those modes and tables. Output one is driving my kick drum through the pico drums. Output two is driving a snare drum through the bassimilis iteratus. I'm gonna turn down the snare for now and focus on the kick, output number one. Table determines what pattern comes out of output number one. We have several different types of tables to choose from. To see what table you're on, you need to press the table button and it'll blink the LED to indicate which one's currently in play. To change the table, you hold the table button and use plus or minus. I'm gonna increment back around to the very top to table number one. When you're not pressing a button, those LEDs along the right side show you what mode you're on. That controls output two, and we'll get there in a couple minutes. The first table is known as divider sequences, where it works in many cases like a simple clock divider. Divide by two, divide by four, divide by eight on your main clock coming in. But if you have an unequal division, it fills in the beats in a more predictable way. You heard earlier, I had basically divide by eight. But I can go to different divisions. And as I mentioned, when you don't have an exact division that fits into your length, you come up with some interesting patterns. There's a constant beat there. And there's three pulses for every four beats. Now my length is eight, and I find that that gives me kind of repetitive patterns. A nice feature of the Knight's Gallop is that if you extend into, say, a 16 beat long sequence, the Knight's Gallop will do different things for the first and the second eight beats. So I'll press mode, then tap table to double my length. So you hear where one half is a very straight disco beat, and the second half is that dut, dut, dut. So I generally find it more interesting to use 16 beat patterns for the Knight's Gallop, or at least ones longer than eight. You can go ahead and use 10, 12, etc. The second table Knight's nice Gallop holds Euclidean patterns, and Euclidean has been quite popular lately. It's based on a very interesting paper that demonstrated if you use a particular math equation, which spreads out the beats as evenly as possible across the pattern, and then uses some interesting math to fill in the remainders, the leftover beats, like if you're trying to fit six beats into a pattern 16 steps long, you get a lot of world rhythms. So let's go ahead and change the table by pressing the table button, verifying I'm on that first table, and then incrementing the second table. Again, let's verify which table I'm on. And here already has more interesting syncopation than the straight divider. You need to sparse your beats. This is, is trying to evenly space out the beats. It can get a little similar to a divider pattern, but more beats can make it more interesting. That's some nice patterns there. And 
Now what the folks at Checkmate Modular found out is even using the proper Euclidean equation, you can still end up with some pretty boring patterns here where we're evenly spacing our pulses throughout the pattern and then we're back to just a simple divider pattern. Therefore, they've created a table called Revised Euclidean, and that's the third table where they've hand moved the beats to create more interesting patterns. There's a nice doubling up of the kick there. And again, you can play with different number of pulses spread out across the length of your pattern. Nice little extra step in there. And again, if I step back to the previous normal Euclidean, you hear where it's just very repetitive. The revised Euclidean, they moved a beat to make things more interesting. Now there's a fourth table called anti-Euclidean. Euclidean tries to make even spacing in between the beats Shackmat's anti-Euclidean tries to maximize the space in between beats, so you get even more interesting syncopations in your beats. So I'm going to go to the fourth table. So it's trying to open up more spaces in the pattern, and by doing so, it crowds together beats to create more rolls. Let's go to something slower. So if you like broken patterns, anti-Euclidean is much more interesting. Nice, almost stutter feel to that. The fifth table is called split sequences, where they're using Euclidean patterns, but filling the first half of the pattern with a different table than the second half of the pattern. So let's go ahead and increment up to that. Here we have one set of four beats and then another set of four pauses. And again, different numbers of pulses give different patterns. In general, I like longer patterns because they give the opportunity to be more interesting rather than being very repetitive. Sometimes a repetitive beat is very useful and this can indeed do four on the four beats but sometimes it's useful to keep the listener's interest. Okay, next let's talk about modes in the Knight's Gallop. Whereas tables control will come out of output number one, modes controls what comes out of output number two. Just like there's several tables, there's several modes, but there's also up to four sub-modes per mode, indicated by the extra LEDs over the mode button. Let's start up another simple sequence. I have my table on the default enhanced Euclidean, but I've set my pulses to a very simple pattern. And right now, my mode is in mode number one, which is known as main mode. It's kind of a set of utility modes. The first sub-mode in mode one sends a pulse to out two only on the downbeat of the pattern. I'm back to an eighth note pattern here, and here on every eighth note, I've got both the kick and the snare. Now, if I was to speed up the number of pulses, we still have a snare happening just on the downbeat. The second sub-mode in main mode is called no shift. And what it really means is output two is a copy of output number one. So no matter how many pulses I have in here, it's a straight copy. Mode number three is an inversion where output two alternates with output number one. Now that would be fun to drive to two different sequencers to get some note hawking, or maybe even to change the patch using a sequential switch. Then sub mode number three basically takes the table of notes being played through output number one and turns it around backwards for output number two. So now as those two different patterns line up, you get some interesting syncopations. And then I'll go back to the first submode where output two is just the downbeat or the reset. To change modes, it's very similar to changing tables. You press and hold the mode button and again use plus and minus. 
I'll increment to the second mode, which is known as compute mode. This uses a variety of different math algorithms to derive output 2's pattern from output 1. In the very first submode, basically half as many pulses are being sent out out 2 as out 1. So you get a simplified almost half-time feel there. We'll go to something faster. And you really hear how that snare output 2 is lagging behind now. It's not nearly as active. As you increase the number of sub-mode in mode 2, things get more complex. As I go to sub-mode number 2, now you get the same number of pulses out of both outputs, but the length of the pattern on output 2 is half as long as the length of the pattern out of output number 1. You can hear output 2 is very repetitive. I can lengthen my pattern up to 16 beats by pressing mode, then tapping table. And by using a pattern twice as long, at least I get some more variation. But this sub-mode basically simplifies output 2. Mode 3 is far more interesting though. It performs some math, which is all detailed in their manual, which basically throws a divide by 3 on the number of pulses coming out of output number 2. As a result, you get some more interesting syncopations. And then finally, submode 4 in the compute mode basically uses a different algorithm to make output number 2 even more, well, random or syncopated compared to output number 1. I'm going to change up my arpeggio a little bit. And then go to the next mode, which is called random mode. This is where you get random beats out of output number 2, added to or subtracted from the pattern coming out of output number 1, to create little fills and little trills and also little dropouts. I'm going to go back to the first submode, and change my mode button to mode 3. In random mode, the first submode is very basic. Output 2 is a copy of output number 1. The second submode basically throws in the occasional fill, an added beat or a dropped beat in output 2 compared to output 1. Not many variations, but they are there occasionally. Now since you rarely have a kick and snare happening on all the same beats together, when I'm playing around with this random mode, I actually prefer to use output 2 as my alternate trigger for my kick drum, just to make my kick pattern more interesting by just occasionally doubling up beats and dropping them. The third submode is what they call hard fill, which is even more randomization. Still based on the pattern going throughout but one, but with more variations happening. And then submode four is what they call full random, Basically, the pulses setting is a probability of how often you're going to get a beat out of output 2 per input clock. It's very few. Still very random, though, to a lot. So again, you find in general, the higher the submode, the more interesting the output. I'll put this back to my kick drum then grab my snare again from output 2. Now the snare is just that occasional accent. I'll put my pattern back up to a nice long 16 beats. The fourth mode is what they call dual mode. For those people who like to play with different timings against each other, you can set different lengths and different number of pulses for output 1 and output 2 and have those two patterns play off of each other. I'll go ahead and set this back to the first sub-mode, and then increment my mode to dual mode. You notice as I change modes, it automatically put the length back down to 8, it doesn't have a 16-beat pattern. And the LED above mode indicates which output you're about to go edit, output 2 or output 1. 
Now they've done a funny thing with the knobs here where they don't want things to jump as soon as you touch a knob. So you have to basically turn the knob past its prior setting before you start editing. I just tend to take the knobs through their full length. So let's say for output number one, I'm gonna move it down to a length of four. And then for output two, I'm gonna change it to five. I can change how many pulses are in there as well. Make sure I'm on five, not six. Or I can make it more simple. Now you can really see the four versus five pattern play out. You have a lot of fun with different timings there. Like I might turn this back down to four. Now you see they're using the same length pattern. And then go back and edit number one to be say three. Creates more of a traveling pattern as you have two different lengths playing against each other. Finally, the fifth mode is record mode where you get to create your own patterns. I press mode, then press plus to go to that fifth mode. Initially, there's nothing loaded. LEDs off for sub mode means you're playing back what you've recorded. LEDs on, and you're about to record. I'm gonna set a useful pattern, like eight, or even 16 long. My pulse density doesn't matter anymore since I'm about to hand enter my beats and go into record mode. And play back. I've had trouble getting record mode to work reliably for me. I've made a lot of mistakes by having too short of a length, so I keep overwriting my pattern, which is no fun at all. But after a while, you can enter your own patterns. And pulses becomes a probability. Thin them out a little bit, or add more beats to them. So that's the Shack Mat Night's Gallop a fun little module to go ahead and create more interesting patterns than you might want to hand program on a step sequencer.